to another topic that is event gateway okay event gateway whatever we have learned till now now you will understand what is an event gateway so let me first create a process see this very carefully because i will give an exercise on this event gateway Now, this is a process. Now, if I have to define uh, some kind of event gateway, I can definitely define now. Before I define an event gateway, we are already aware of intermediate receiving message event, right? We have learned this yesterday. We know that it waits for some message to come and then only it will move forward, right? And today what we learned? Today we learned timer, right? Now, event gateway is a combination of intermediate event, intermediate receiving message event, and a timer. Everybody is nodding their head, but don't you think it's confusing? How can a gateway have both? So here, let me drag it. That's how your event gateway looks like. Okay. So it looks complicated, but it's actually very easy. Let me make you understand. Let me connect the dots here. Okay, now I'll explain this. <clears throat> so guys, whoever is uh, writing something on their paper, please focus on the screen right now. <clears throat> Here, okay. First of all, what is an intermediate receiving message event? We all know it, right? We discussed it yesterday also, day before yesterday. So it waits for some message to come from the UCA. Whenever it gets delivered, it moves forward. Now, just consider this path. Just consider this path. So what will happen? Whenever this intermediate event will receive the message, it will move forward. It will trigger this user task. Maybe I'm getting some message like we did it yesterday. I will display the message over here. And then it will move forward to the end event. Right? Simple. Now this is a timer. Right? Timer we just learned. Timer what will happen? I have to define some time over here. Whenever the time is reached, it will move to the script task and it will complete the instance. Now here is a gateway. What will happen? In this gateway, it is so smart, it will actually wait for the message. Okay, because we have an intermediate message event. Timer also we have defined some time. Say we have defined say two hours. So this event gateway will wait for two hours till some message is coming here. If some message is received over here, then this timer will not be triggered. It will take this path, it will trigger this activity, and it will move forward in this path. But if the message is not received within two hours, it will take this path, it will come to the script, and it will go to the end event. I'll explain once again. This event gateway, it actually waits either for the message or for this timer to be triggered. Basically, we have to define some time over here. Say two hours, we define. Which means this event gateway, it is giving this intermediate event. Say I give you two hours. If the message comes, then it's fine. We will take this path. If it doesn't come, then I have already a timer. I will take this script. I will take this path and I will complete this instance. Did we understand? Any confusion? Round one second. Hmm. Okay. Now, say we have a sender process. I will, I will just uh, uh, discuss more about this. Say we have a sender process and this is a receiver process. Right? 
definitely it's a receiver process because we are using intermediate receiving message event over here right so which means i am expecting some message to come from some other process now this event gateway it is connected by default with an intermediate message event and a timer whenever you drag it you see this will come together always so this event gateway is telling that hey i have defined some time over here the two hours so i am giving into this intermediate event two hours if some message is coming within two hours then what will happen if the message comes within two hours then it's fine then it will take this path it will trigger this activity and it will go to the end event but in case what happens what the timer does if within those two minutes or two hours whatever we are defining if that time is crossed then definitely this path will be activated so here either or or any of this paths will be taken depending on what i have defined here and definitely depending on the uca whether it is able to deliver the message within the specified time which i have defined in the timer that's it are we good yes sir rahul ka can't we yes, use an exclusive gateway itself like uh, we can add timers and even even right yeah we can we can define in that way also through an exclusive gateway but if you already have a gateway like this then definitely it becomes easier for the developer to implement this right yeah yes we can i mean exclusive gateway also you can take any one of the path that is correct so we can but ideally we should always go for an event gateway in this kind of situation now why it is an event gateway why i have not defined this as something else because both this components are event components okay intermediate receiving message event is definitely an event component and timer is also an event component okay that's the reason they have named it as event gateway all right uh very rarely you will get this kind of implementation in projects but if you have then we know how to implement it okay if some if someone asks you tomorrow that hey how what is an event gateway how can we implement it we should be able to answer that question and we should be able to implement it if it is absolutely necessary in the project okay all of you did you understand what is event gateway yes rahul yes rahul yes rahul, yes, rahul. okay implementation guys is very very simple okay i'll tell you what to do you need to complete this by tomorrow this will also help you to understand and implement timer which we discussed today and intermediate receiving message event i believe by now we all are experts in intermediate message events receiving and sending right so what we need to do we will have process 1 sender process where i will have an intermediate sending message event right i will have process 2 which is my receiver process which will look exactly same the way you are seeing it right now this should be the diagram okay now what will happen sender process i have to populate some data over there that is up to you whether you want to populate a complex data or a simple data it is totally up to you it can be a single value it can be multiple value it is totally up to you that that uh, freedom is up to you you can define it in your own way 